The last time I cried, in 2013, I went through, you know, quite some tough times. I was out there in the news, you know, some, you know, divorce cases. Yeah. I was being published here and there. All sort of things were said about me, negative things and false stuff were said about me. Sometimes God often uses delays to test our obedience and patience. And I remember getting that call to say that Abba had passed away. I'm the first radio presenter on commercial radio mm. to play gospel music on radio prime time. They used to call you Akasanoma. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> on Radio Z. Yep. How was it those times starting out on, on radio as Akasanoma? Not a baby Santana at that time, Akasanoma. <laughs> I remember in 1997 when I had a stint with Vibe FM mm -hmm. and I was unsuccessful after my national service in 1996. I went back to Kofredia where I was born, where my yeah. parents lived, and I got a job with Radio Z. Mm -hmm. So my first time on air, I was giving music coupons wow. to, and you know, I had meditated. And I flew like something. Hello, good evening. You are listening to Radio Z105.1. My name is Gilbert Abiku Agri. You can call me MC Rashes or Akasanoma. I have my first coupon signed by blah, blah, blah. I said, wow, the guy flows. Hey, man, tomorrow you are not doing the show. You are going to do the late evening drive. Wow. After three months, they brought me to mid-morning. After six months, morning show and... I bet. The rest is history. And that time you was using cassette. It was cassette, right? Oh, yeah, right? yeah, cassette, cassette, yeah, cassette. So Kevin used to help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used Get, to produce. You know, the music for me. Maxell 90. We in Kofuria didn't have, you know, the latest mm. song. You know, CD player was not even, come on. Mm, mm. I could count the number of people who had video deck in our area. Mm. So I didn't have music. Yeah. And you can't be a good music presenter yeah. if you don't have music. So my brother used to help me yeah. go to music shops, record the songs. So when I go on air, I play from cassette. Yeah. Then, you know, you just wind the cassette like this. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, you know, you took a bold step and you moved to Kumasi. Yeah. Um, and started working on Mercury yeah. FM. What was the stages that you went through there? Well, in fact, Radio Mercury used to be run by the late Otunfo Pokuwari's first son, okay. called Nanakwabna Poku, Nanakokosohine. He was traveling from Accra to Kumasi. On his way to Kumasi, he got to Bunsu, and he tuned into our radio, and he heard me talking. Mm. Who is this guy who is so energetic, mm. in high spirit? Yeah. This is the kind of presenter we need on our yeah. station. So he called my station and gave his number to the technician on duty. The mm -hmm. technician gave it to me said that a certain man says you should call him. I called him, said he has a radio in Kumase called Radio Mercury, he wants to work with me. He listened to me uh, on his way to Kumase from Accra. I went to Kumase, I approached him, he showed me his station at Abreport Junction. And then he told me if I can work with him, he'll work with me. Mm -hmm. I was taking 12 CDs then, and he said he was going to give me 300,000, which is 30 Whoa. CDs now. And I said, wow, okay, it's like over 150 mm -hmm. percent you know, better than what yeah. I'm getting in Kofuria. Again, it's Kumasi, and Kumasi is a big city. Mm -hmm. So why don't I grab the opportunity? Mm -hmm. But he said, I'm not giving you accommodation. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody in Kumasi, but I accepted the offer. I came on air and I started speaking various languages, not too deep. I can speak Eve, Ga, Hausa, you know, and French. Mm -hmm. But they are two by four, two by four. So people <laughs> say, hey, wow, I quite been a casa, well, you know, yeah. who's that guy who speaks, you know, he's multilingual. Yeah. And I said, I'm a stranger in town, I need a place, you know, to lay my head. Mm. And I, that, that day, that very day, somebody called me from Kwara Sunsum that he has a guest house called White Orange. Mm -hmm. I should come and live there till I get accommodation. I stayed in Kwara Sunsum White Orange for eight months free free of charge, wow. you know, and it was like that. After nine months, I became a hot cake in Kumasi. Everybody was looking, mm. chasing me. Uh, Capital Radio, Utec FM, and Fox FM. 
But then you later went to Ash. I went to Ash because I always want new, new challenges. So Ash FM came and as a new station, you sent me BA station and I'm a static station. Why is me ye? You were also doing news. You were reading oh, yeah, the news yeah, yeah, at that yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, I used to be the most fantastic newscaster because I was trained um, at GBC mm -hmm. way back in 1997. Mm -hmm. So people don't know the yeah. radio, I'm um, everywhere. News, current affairs, talk show, entertainment, comedy, concert, marketing, what have mm. you. If you mm -hmm. was, I mean, the biggest show on Adom FM. Yeah. And you created that and it kind of blew up everywhere. Mm. I mean, people in London, I was listening to the show mm. in London. What made you come up with that concept? When I joined Adum FM in 2002, the biggest drive time presenters in Accra were Fifi Banson on Peace FM and Mickey Osebeko on Radio Gold. Mm. I needed to do something new, different, mm. uh, I, and I like being creative. Mm. Peace called its drive Kwanso Brebre. Radio Gold called their drive homebound or home stretch or so. So I needed local, local, mm. local, local. Mm. Peace was the leading mm. and it's still the leading mass, yeah. you know, radio mm. in, in Ghana. But I needed to break that jinx. Mm. So I came out with the concept, if you can, so mm. like on your way home. And I'm the first radio presenter on commercial radio mm. to play gospel music on radio prime time. Wow. Gospel music was a preserve for pastors. Yeah. You don't hear, you know, presenters playing gospel. They don't, if they would play gospel just for intro. Mm. But now, gospel music is popular in Ghana yeah. through me. Yeah. By the yeah. grace of Almighty God. Mm. I mean, you've helped a lot of artists. Kwade, uh, Sony Achiba. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I, featured, I featured. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Esther Smith. I sold es Esther Smith's first Daughters album. Of Daughters of Glorious mm -hmm. Jesus. Nana Kwame. Mm -hmm. Kunti Hine. Mm -hmm. What encouraged you to help these artists? What did you see in them? I saw talent. For instance, when I met Kwade, he approached me. He actually came to my house. We live in the same community. And a bro pen saying Satchum. A bro pen saying Satchum. Uh, you know, JJ, it's a community guy, yeah. you know, he, he's doing the local rap mm. with an indigenous Kumasi accent, mm. you understand? And um, I said, no, this is a talent. I remember in the year 2000, I had gotten a contract with Guinness to be the compare or the MC for Michael Power Hero promotion. Okay. I was doing in-bar activation. So I carry him along. Mm. So when we go to Brother Man at Patase, before I'll do my raffle draw mm -hmm. and promotions in the bar, I'll let him sing. Okay. But hey, I've also benefited a lot from them. Yeah. I went to America for the first time through an artist, through oh. artist management. Okay. So, I mean, I've benefited from them. And it's because I love the music, the entertainment industry. Mm. I've paid my dues for them. Mm. So now I'm just relaxing. I remember the first time Abeku Santana interviewed me on Radio Z. I was, you know, so happy because he was happy for what he does. He was so glad to be a radio presenter. And it was, I mean, so marvelous that Abeku loved what he was doing. He's a family man. Uh, he happens to have time for, with his family. Um, he's married to Genevieve, Mrs. Genevieve Agri, uh, Um And um, he's my adopted son. Uh, he calls me uncle, and uh, I'm very proud of him, what he has been able to do in a really short time. We first met in Kumasi, that was around 99, 2000, when I, was, I had closed lectures and on my way home, I met him at a drinking place. Apart from you being a radio presenter, you're, so, you're also a family man. Yeah. Um, with your beautiful kids. Yeah. I know uh, a couple of years ago, yeah. uh, your youngest yeah. passed away. Yeah. Um, I know that was difficult for you, as it was difficult for me, because I, I knew Abba we were going as well. to ask me about my marriages. We would, uh, no. We'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go there. And, you know, I'm very um, blunt. Me, I'll tell you everything yeah, as it I is. Mean, yeah. For me, uh, I knew Abba from when she was, yeah, yeah, she yeah. was born. 
I remember you called me to say that um, she's got a hole in her heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she needed to have an operation. Yeah. And you said that, you know, there's a good doctor in, in, in Ghana. And I was like, I've been mean, Ghana, Ooh. dear. You know, bring her to London. Or uh, I think we even mentioned South Africa. But you're like, no, there's also good doctors in, 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 in Ghana. Um, so you have confidence that, you know, everything will be fine. Um, and I remember getting that call to say that Abba had passed away. Let me first commend you that I didn't know anything about Down syndrome mm -hmm. or autism. Mm -hmm. You came to the house, you saw my daughter, yeah. and you saw some features yeah. of Down syndrome mm -hmm. on her. Yeah. You know, Ghana, when you have a child and uh, the child or the baby has features of Down syndrome, yeah. you don't want to accept it. Yeah. And you know, one, it must hold some spiritual thing, aloof, you know, Beisem and all those kind of things. When you told me immediately, I read research and I realized that, oh yes, it's true. She has those features. Then, you know, my wife then they want to accept. Say, mm Tofiakwa, -hmm. so, I find it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. It's not true. She can't have this and all that. But that was a reality. Yeah. So on, 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 on. She started developing a lot of complications, yeah. you know an acute NASA and chest yeah. congestion, yeah. which led to the diagnosis of um, hole in heart. And unfortunately, you know, she, she passed on. It's one of those things. And I have learned a lot. It's the responsibility of every man that when your wife takes seat or your wife gets pregnant, you pay good attention to her. You know, what she eats, her lifestyle, everything must change. You know, besides that, you must be responsible for your wife's pregnancy because women, you know, normally takes a lot of things for granted. And if you take pregnancy for granted, you pay a price for it. There are certain do's and don'ts. And it's high time in Ghana we do away or demystify the perception of baby, a draw, and this and that. You understand? You don't have to drink if you're pregnant. You don't have to get close to smoke if you're pregnant. And even husbands don't also have to smoke when their wives are pregnant and all that. So um, I'm guilty of certain things that I didn't know. And um, I think now that yeah. I'm, in, I'm in the known, I'm yeah. very careful trying to guide you know, my wife the way she should go. So yeah, yeah that was quite a painful, mm -hmm. you know, experience but you know it's history yeah um, how did you manage to tell nana which is abba's younger sister i know they were very close that it, abba i mean what did you tell them i meditated mm -hmm. and like anytime i have problem i just consult my yeah. father in heaven and um, quickly he gave me an idea to tell them about the story of Jesus Christ who loved little children. Mm. And um, I also asked them, what are you studying? I think they have religious and moral education, RME in school. Okay. And at that time they were studying, I think, Moses. Okay. And Moses was in Egypt and pyramids and Pharaoh and all that. I said, okay, that is good. So they asked, where is Abba? I said, Abba has gone to God. She's in heaven. Mm. I said, <laughs> Really? I say yes. See, Abba eat a lot also. <laughs> but now you should be eating in heaven. I say yes. See, oh. then Abba will disturb God. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Abba. Yeah. So um, we'll go to Egypt. Say, yeah. Hey. I say, yeah, we'll go to Egypt. So I send them to Egypt. Mm. Yeah. I send them to Egypt to go and see pyramids. Wow. And, you know, they came face to face with, you know, the Bible story that they were learning mm. in school. So it's kind of, yeah. you know, emphasize on the story I told mm. them about. So they know that Abba is in heaven. Wow. Yeah. And then, I mean, I'm moving forward. Another person that was very close to you, who I also knew, was your bodyguard mm. Um, mm. that got stabbed. No, shot. Shot. Yeah, shot in the head. Um, how did you manage to cope with that? Because I know you guys were very close. <laughs> It was also, you know, another, you know, traumatic, difficult moment for me. I was on air when the news was mm -hmm. broken, but they couldn't 
tell you. You know, yeah. disclose it immediately. So they waited till after my show and they told me, and I just went down, but I, yeah, and that's the end of the story. And um, yes, I buried him. I don't know who is behind, but um, it's also history. <laughs> so you can imagine, you know, how hard I've been hit mm. in, in life. And you see, all these things will not deter me. I'm the last soldier standing. <laughs> I, I don't care what happens to me. I've fought a good fight. I've paid my dues. I'm just waiting for the crown. I don't have any problem with anybody. That is the last thing I'll do. You know, I'm a visionary person. I have big, big, big ambitions. Um, anything that I say it with my mouth will come to pass. I remember telling my wife that, look, in three years or in two years, Every two years, I build a house. Every two years. In fact, I take huge, apparent huge tax, and I do it. Every two years. And you know what? When anything happens to me, I tell you, no, let's move on. Go, go, go. Let's forget it. But let's move on. I can't get stuck by unfortunate situations in life. No, 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 no. Not even my mom or my dad to pass on. I'll go and put them in the morgue, bury them. Monday, Tuesday, I'll be at work. I buried my sister Saturday. Monday, I was at work working. I buried my uncle Saturday. Monday, I was working. No matter who is close to me, I buried my daughter. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I didn't go to work. Monday, I was at work. Two days. No, 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 no. No accident can get me stuck. No, me, myself, when I'm sick, I still go to work. You cannot crush me. I'm very strong in the mind. No, no, not at all. Throughout all this process, was there a moment that you cried? I cried. I, I cried. I cried a lot. Often, I cried. In 2012, I cried when Atamels died. Besides losing loved ones, I cry when sometimes, you know, I get a bit emotional with, you know, certain situations in life. I cry. I cry when people don't understand me. I cry when people misconstrue what I say. I cry when people hurt me. I cry when people have shared my life with disappoint me. I cry. Sometimes I cry to God and ask him why these things are happening to me. I cry when I get very much. I cry to myself and I can cry. In 2013, I went through you know, quite some tough times. I was out there in the news you know, some, you know, divorce cases. Yeah. I was being published here and there. All sort of things were said about me, negative things and false stuff were said about me. I cried. I cried to myself and I cried to my driver. We'll be in the car and I'll be crying. So boss, and yes, she buying careful. I said, but why? But hey, come on, it doesn't you know, stay on for long. Yeah. Quickly, I shoot myself back and I move on. Abeko is very, very emotional. And if you are not closer to him, you wouldn't really know how emotional he is. I am Michael, well, was it 2011 December? It was October, November, the last quarter of 2012, 11, that we had a little misunderstanding and he broke down. That's when I got to know that he really, really meant living together with me. What would your first wife say about you? She congratulated me when she heard that I'm married again. He said, I knew. She's the one you were going to marry. Really? Yes. Why? Because she was there before I even married her. Wow. Yeah. My current wife, we've been, we've been together for over 13 years. Wow. And my first wife knows her. So she sent me a text, and I showed it to my wife, mm. my current wife, yeah. that Nana has sent me a text. I said, wow. You know, I was young. Mm. and. In your youthful exuberance, you can take certain decisions that later mm. it turns yeah. the other way around. Yeah. But to God be the glory, my former wife or my first wife is successfully married in 
London. When she gave birth, she sent me pictures. I showed it to my current wife. Oh. We're very cool, cool, very cool, very close. There's no, I mean, she even opted for divorce. I have never divorced any lady in my life. People don't know. Mm. Never. God bless me, witness. I've never, I've never, you know, threatened any woman in my life that I'm going to divorce you. But people don't know. So it's them? Yes. My first wife, I'm saying this, this is a public, you know, platform, mm. I don't lie. Abeku is a wonderful guy. And I hope and pray that God give him strength, wisdom. Even though we are in the same industry, we are the same, we are in the same office, we do the same work. Whatever Abeku does at OKFM or on radio, some of us, me for instance, I take a lot of inspiration from it. He started with his own style. He has his own way to approach radio. He is a role model for quite a number of people in this country, especially the youth. Here is a young man that wherever you go, young people follow him. And uh, he has set certain standards, which I think is good for this country that if our young people will emulate some of the things that he's done, then this country, you know, is going to go from great to strength. And uh, I, I wish him everything that he envisaged himself for in the future. So when you look back on how you behave professionally and in your personal life, is there anything that you would change? I'll be careful how I choose my friends. I'll be careful how I share my dreams and my vision friends. I don't have any regret in my life apart from friends. And I'm saying this to people over there. Be careful who you share your sorrowful moment with. And even with the ladies. Be careful when you meet a guy how you share your past painful moments in your relationship with. They will use it against you. When you get a new job, the first person you take as your friend will be your first enemy. Be careful who you call your friend. Now my best friend is Jesus Christ. Apart from Jesus, I don't have anybody as my best friend. I don't want to share. I don't share my dreams. I do it as and when I have the ability to do it. But I will not tell you my plans. Mm, mm. No, I will not. If I've not been strong, trust me, I would have been kicked out from the industry. It's true. Yeah, friends. True. And lastly, how would Abeku Agri Santana like to be remembered? He's that one phenomenon who created excitement, suspense, provoked people. That's me. That's how you can define me. I entertain, inspired, and provoked. Before success, you must sacrifice. And with you, I can tell you, I'll confess, I've done a lot of sacrifices. Spiritual, when I have to put the food aside mm -hmm. for days and months and pray and fast for a radio station to become successful. When the station grows and I've become successful and popular, I'm for what I say, no more sell. Oh, I'm not going to food, I'm going to Anything that I say with my mouth, it will happen. Trust me, it's a covenant I have with God. I don't curse. Your enemy will always say negative things about you. And the things that your enemy says are the true reflection of you. So take the feedback from your enemies and perfect it. Your friends, they can think, oh, this is nice, so oh, hair. I like your hair. Oh, look at your color. It's so beautiful. I like your nails. Ah, this is, um, um. when you turn around, mm, look at some colors and combination. This lady. So me, people can fake to you. They will tell you all sort of things. You are good. I don't like praising, you know. No, 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 no. Me, if you come to me and you are praising me, I know that you don't like me. And that is one of the laws of Robert Greene in his 48 laws of power. And that has been my philosophy and my guiding principle. Nobody owns this world apart from God, the creator. So why should you be intimidated? No, if you don't have money, Pray to God and work at it. Make, do everything possible to get it. And when you get the money, save or invest. 
I mean, me, I don't see why I should go to politicians and beg. That's why I can speak my mind. I don't go to anybody and ask for money. I'm saying this on record. I don't ask money from politicians. They need me more than I need them. I don't need them. I don't need any politician. When I hear people saying that politician help me, you help me do what? Pay my children's school fees? Buy me a house? Or what? Oh, do you think if I were to be you know, a street guy or maybe a useless person, any politician would have, you know, I mean, found value in me? No, there's something in me that they need. You have to pay me for that. If you don't pay me, man, how? And that is the story of Abeku Santana. From Koforidria to radio, to business, to his marriage life, to his children. In a package, all for you on The Dentist Show. I hope you enjoy the show. See you next time.